Well, good evening, good day, and good morning. I think I did all in the backwards of a uh, Truman show. Yeah, you've heard it say good night. Yeah. Right, I'll see you. Good afternoon, good evening, well, and good night. He's the star of the show. It's the only one you need to know is Gizmo. <laughs> but just in case, we are joined by Lord Cash, Bitteritz, and myself. This is a latest episode of Call of the Wild right here on the New York Nerd Show Network. Uh, great to have you. Hopefully, it's great to have us as well. Uh, don't mind the uh, mark on my forehead. I got attacked by a wildebeest. I'm very angry wildebeest. A rhino. They have one horn. Yeah. Either way. I it was like Ash Sunday or something like that. No. Moving no. on. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> so we recently got a pickup of Sega Saturn games yep. uh, from somebody on uh, Facebook Marketplace. This was a, I feel like, two or three week ordeal um very nice gentleman but uh it took a bit to coordinate timing so yeah we finally uh you know we're able to connect and we'll show off uh what we picked up so this first one is yep. arcade's greatest hit so the sega saturn by the way was a video game system that was put out in uh, 1994 in japan and 1995 in the united states infamous um because they launched the sega saturn five months early without telling the um, the people that were actually the stores that were going to be carrying it. Retailers. Yeah. Uh, they basically tried to get ahead of the competing Sony PlayStation 1 by just saying, it's coming out tomorrow uh, in the middle of May. And uh, cool for the fans. The problem is that the developers were not finished with their games. <laughs> and like I uh, KB Toys, for example, banned the Sega Saturn. Mm -hmm. um, I started working there a couple years after, and I heard all about it. Uh, basically... Like uh, KB had no inventory, they had no signage for it. So all of a sudden, all these customers would be coming in and saying, "I want the Sega Saturn." Nobody had it, so it gave a lot of ill will to a lot of retailers. And uh, yeah, it was just like a really for, yeah, a yeah. Lot of for, yeah, yeah. It was a big botch, but here it is. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so the one thing about these are the cases are very easy to break, not easy to repair. So. It looks very similar to that, like of a jewel case for you know your your CDs uh, from the you know from the mid nineties. Right, right. But they're thicker. Yeah. So normally, when you're lucky enough, there's a piece of styrofoam across the front. You'll see some. Yes, we did get some in here. Um, and then, as you see there, this one's cracked on the case. If you could kind of tell, so not perfect. But when uh, a lot of times the the um, like the top, like with the clasp. Yeah, the cla is yeah, that's not the word, but uh, that I'm trying to think of. But either way, that works. Uh, and so there's a side art on the side, and then um, kind of like exactly like a CD case, you have the back part is behind there. So this one is, as I said, Arcade's uh, Midway presents Arcade's greatest hits. It has some titles on there like Asteroids, Tempest. Um, I'm I'm kind of reading them off of this, but I also I'm familiar with this game that they brought it out on the original PlayStation as well. So the, yeah, um, six, they say like Battle Toads or Battle something. Battle Zone, you're a Battle Zone. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I'm gonna just make us large for a second. So uh, real quick, Centipede, um, uh, Missile Command, Super Breakout, and you said Asteroids already, right? Yeah. So there we go. And then it's a black and white manual. There's your uh, warranty card. Yeah, and it's like still attached. Ooh, oh, look at that centipede. Yes, and that is your uh, model one of the Sega Saturn controller. They did make a slimmer version of it as well. Um, Saturn games, like I said, are pretty um pretty uncommon, partially because, like I mentioned before, I don't think that they are really wide in a variety um and availability back in the day. I mean, I had one back in the day, so I mean, I was definitely I grew up in this um era. Uh, and like I said I think it just boiled down to. The Saturn notes. was expensive, first of all. Um, it retailed for, again, of that era, $400. Um, and again, I might be wrong. I, I don't think I'm very far off, though, quite honestly. Um, so that's it, what it looked like? I thought it was pretty cool. I mean, you had a lot of, you know, well-known uh, series. I'd say Virtual Cop and House of the Dead started on this console. Um, but, you know, infamously, there were no official Sonic to Hedgehog mainline games on it. Is this stuff that had Typing of the Dead? 
No, Typing of the Dead would be on the Sega Dreamcast, oh, the console okay. that came after this. Now, uh, Lord Cash, um, you know the question I'm going to ask you next. Do you? Well, I could get a score. So. But uh, in all reality, though, no. But did you ever have a Sega Saturn or know anybody that did? So I thought I did. Um, so me, no. Um, growing up, um, I had uh, an Atari. Um, I bought a Nintendo, uh, the you know the original NES uh, for myself. Probably uh, there was a lady that was selling it, and there was like ninety one, maybe ninety two, that I bought the entire game system and all the games that she had. I think it was like a hundred bucks that she was just trying to get rid of it from her, you know, her kids or whatever. Um, I bought it from her. Had the regular Saturn. I'm sorry, the regular uh, Sega. Mm -hmm. um, now you said that this came out in the U.S. in '95. Correct. Yeah, it came out. Uh, like I said May of '95, um, and then the, um, the the PlayStation came out. Like I said, a, a couple uh, months later. Okay. Oh, number. So then. When did the Dreamcast come out? Was that before? Oh no, it came out nine nine ninety nine. Okay, and it reached of nineteen one hundred ninety nine ninety nine. So outside of your um, Nintendo's and your and your regular Sega game system, mm -hmm. what would have been out around uh, April fourth of nineteen ninety three? April 4th in 1993, you would have had, um, realistically, for something relatively new, it would have been, well, just Sega Genesis would have been out because Sega 32X did not come out to 1994. It came out um, shortly after this. Uh, it was conceived almost like a stopgap system. So there, there, there was a, a game system out there that used discs mm -hmm. that... Um, you remember how, uh, well, I, I've told you, my first WrestleMania yes. was over at a birthday party. Right. On that date that I just mentioned. I don't know if you... In in 93, uh, the Sega CD was out. Okay, then that's what it was, the Sega CD. One second. So we had watched WrestleMania 9 um, at my friend's house, John, and... I stayed up all night playing on the Sega CD columns. Yeah, Sega CD uh, had that. There were, uh, it was kind of like their version of uh, like of Tetris, and I played it like four or five hours. Um, so yeah, that that's then that's what I played uh, in '93. Yeah, Sega CD came out, and I believe. Uh, they might have come out actually in 93. Sega was putting out a lot of consoles over a short period of time. And even the Sega CD model, there was uh, four different models of this. There was this one, the one called the Sidewinder unofficially. There's a CDX and there's a JVC XI. Um, and may or may not have all four. I do not remember which one I played on. But that that's as close as I, I did to... Um the uh the 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 sega saturn gotcha yeah right. go ahead next up we got uh sega saturn dark light conflict you know no this one explosions when i saw that on the list of the games i was really intrigued because like i had no clue what it was um and right now it looks like it's almost like a 3d shooter like a space shooter um and yeah, it's made by Electronic Arts. I mean, EA was pretty well known for doing uh, sports, obviously at the time, but also, um, you know, basically they did a lot of like, other games they the could publish. Games. Yeah, the guy told us that these were definitely not in the best of shape, but he was pretty straightforward on you know what we got to see. Um, he had tested all these, and I believe that for sure. I um, think this one just needs to be wiped down a bit. Yeah, it's one of those things where I don't know. It's it's hard to say. Like. Um, Again, Saturn games are so uncommon yeah. these days, and I don't know. I think that the, the price that we got these for was quite fair. Um, it wasn't like, you know... It, it wasn't a steal. No, it was wasn't a, a steal price. by any price or by any uh, means. But, you know, I figured it'd be kind of cool to add to the collection, and 
there were a couple that I definitely really wanted to play. And again, there's some others that would be kind of interesting to check out. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if this is just rust. I hope it's just rust. It is. It so is. It's a rusty we're gonna staple. Put that, we're going to put this on the side. Make sure you're up on your tetanus shots. Yes. Yeah. All right. This one I know you were very excited about. Yeah. Spot. Spot the mascot for 7-Up Soda. Spot um, nice. Hollywood. He, so uh, there's no cover. Uh, there's no manual on this one. Disappointing in that, actually. It does have the back. The... There and is, the case is in good shape. Yeah. There are three spot games that I'm familiar with. There was Spot on the original Nintendo, which was a puzzle game. Um, and then there was also Cool Spot, platform on the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo. Really cool game. Um, and then Spot Goes to Hollywood is an isometric uh, game. I had completely forgot about this game's existence until I saw it on the guys' list. And I was like, immediately, uh, really wanted to get it. So He has his own Hollywood square. Of course. <laughs> So this would be kind of silly game to play. Um, the 1990s had a lot of games like this where like each level looks like the movie set, like a parody, hence the Hollywood right. part. Um, just a lot of games had that kind of aesthetic where the characters would be going through different kinds of sets, like uh, whether it be this one or Gex, or even they had a home improvement game where uh, Tim the Toolman Taylor was going across the different uh, studio um Block looking and, and, and sound stages, so to speak, of different uh, things being filmed. Were you familiar with that one, Lord Cash? That Home Improvement had a video game. I cannot say that I am. Now you know. Yes. Next up is <laughs> Thunder and Strike. Was purchased for four dollars, not by us. Yeah. <laughs> we only paid, I think, a little bit more so than four. You get Thunder and Strike. No. Yeah, I mean, come on, That's what a deal. Yeah. Oh wait, Thunder and Strike two. <gasps> oh, Whoa. double the price. Yes. Double so, the thunder, double the strike. Yes. <laughs> There's a back shot uh, or the screenshots on the back cover art. And I'll get, open up the manual in a second. Did now, you play thunder, thunder and Strike 2? I mean, 1? Is it Thunder Strike or Thunder and Strike? Because there's a plus sign. There's a plus sign. I think it is Thunder and Strike. Okay. Ooh. There it is. Styrofoam. Yes. Yeah. Nice. It is funny when you collect Sega CD or Sega Saturn games, that is one of those, like, um, kind of like the Nintendo styrofoam in the bottom of a box. Yeah. This is kind of one of those things where you're like, oh, my God, Anna has a yeah. styrofoam. I'm sold. Like This manual just, is in good condition. This this box is not as uh, grimy as some others, so that makes me well, happy. Well, we're going to clean them up, and they'll be fine. We? No. You all clean it up. <laughs> no. So I know I can go to like Walmart or, or whatever, Amazon, and buy replacement uh, DVD jewel cases uh, to, you know, replace ones that you may have stepped on or whatever. Yeah. Do they make replacement uh, jewel cases for the Saturn? So up until last year, no. Um Hyperkin and a couple other online uh, companies have finally, it took forever, they have finally started to sell these replacement wise. Um, last I checked, they were six dollars a piece, so expensive. it is expensive. Um, a couple of the games that we got from this gentleman actually were sports games, uh, and he was selling them for about five bucks. And honestly, I bought them entirely for what you just asked. I'm just gonna gut them and I'll play them, but I'm just gonna I'm just taking them for the case. That's really yeah. all right. Probably sell the sport game or whatever. Yeah, sell it loose or something. I'll yeah. put it in a binder. F1 Challenge, this uh, car racing. Look at those fancy cars. Ooh. <laughs> uh, that was 16 bit, 32 bit. Oh, yeah, come on. 32 bit here. Ooh. Actually, this might have been considered 64 bit because 32X was 32 bit. So there's the CD. It's kind of funny. They don't even consider bitage anymore. You know, I mean, they just got to like basically. Uh, Dreamcast was 128, if I'm not mistaken, and then it was just kind of like, ah, we can't count anymore. <laughs> we, I can't multiply this by two anymore. Yes, exactly, exactly. You can't double it. I have a few different modes that you could choose from in the game, it looks like. And uh, my favorite is Allah. <laughs> what? Oh, Allah mode. Yes, yes. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, cockpit view or raised rear view? What? These are the kind of things that always like fi I find interesting, right? Especially because we're still gamers to this day, right? You know, Lord Cash, to myself. Back in this era, 
you would be able to um, highlight the fact that there were six tracks, and that would be like, oh man, that is top notch. What replay value? You now, could do like one per day. Yeah, and then the take sixth. off on Sunday, the Sabbath. Exactly. The sixth. Yeah. So there's Neo City Novice, Neo City Advanced, Neo City Expert, Hockenheim, Hockenheim, Suzuka, and Monte Carlo. Yes. And there's like the six it, different things. Wait, hold on. So my warranty my, card. My point of Love mentioning it. that though is that nowadays when you get a racing game, I mean you're looking at thirty to forty tracks. I feel like. Yeah, like just Mario Kart. You know, one of the the more popular racing games out there right now. Um, you know, you've got what eight different cups. You've got a couple tracks. Um, and within that, I know like one of them. If you play the um. Um, well, there's four, four, uh, four cups, and there's at least there's, sorry, eight cups, four on each track, so that at least is 32. Right. Well, then if you do the um, what's the the game on the the switch that um, the the <laughs> huh? That's got the uh, wow, my my daughter plays it. It's got like Nook Shop, uh, Nook's oh, Crazy. Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing. There you go. There's one that's themed after that. It's based. You've got four different seasons. Yep. So yep. like that in itself. Like, I really need to share some of the trouble. No, no, this is not. This is the book for this. Troubleshooting. Ready? On and off. Wait, wait, wait. Fax support. If you have access to a fax machine, many technical support documents and hint sheets are available at for fax back through our automated support system. Online support. For computer users who also own a modem and telecommunications software, VIE has its own eight-line support BBS. See information below. And then internet access. To access, or please access VIY's worldwide website. It wasn't even just a website in those days. Hmm. For technical support information and the most up-to-date product information. AOL, Vi support is the username, which I think is awesome. If they even have just their own AOL username so that yep. you can chat with them. Uh, and then hint information. There are many ways to receive hints for VIE games. Is it VI or VIE? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, no. It's, so that's what I was going to mention now. So Lord Cash and Bitterich, you might recognize the company that actually made this because they made many of the games that we played uh, and still play for the Disney series. Oh, yeah? Virgin Interactive Enterprises. Didn't they have a phone? Didn't they own a phone thing and, like, a airline? Oh, they had Virgin Mobile. I think oh. it's different. Okay, never mind. But they made Aladdin. They also made Lion King. Um, I don't know if they published any of the other ones, but they definitely published these two games, and apparently they went and made a uh, F1 racing game. There you go. So, wait. Clue books are available for most major games and can be found at many software stores in order from our direct line. They also have two automated hint lines available 24 hours a day. They were very good with their customer service. The cost is only 75 cents per minute. You must have a touch tone phone and be at least 18 years old or have your parent or guardian permission before calling. That checks all the way around. Lord Cash, get your phone. Yep. Oh, a uh, $1.25 uh, in Canadian money per minute. So I just thought, oh, free hint sheets are not up. Oh. While free hint sheets are not available for all games, many can be requested through our automated support system. And if you have a fact sheet, these hint sheets can be faxed back to you instantly. There's an automated system for that. That's amazing. So you're gonna you gonna fax them? Yeah, we should try it. See what I, I gotta say that the spent amount of time that Bitterist just spent doing that is probably longer than I'm gonna be spent playing this. <laughs> I just haven't skimmed through. I'm sure they all have that kind of thing, which I love. Reading this old. Maybe, maybe this could be like a, a game room coming up, though. We'll and just play all these. Let me see one more thing I want to show. Don't cite me. Amazing. One of the best racing games on the Saturn. So, very specifically, how many racing games came out on the Saturn? Same said game fan. It's a great magazine. <laughs> and I will say, this was 1996. Mind you, Saturn came out in mid 95. Not a lot of games on the console at that point. All right, next up we got Mist. So, you know, definitely across a few different systems. Uh, yeah, on PlayStation yeah, as have well. Have you, either of you played Mist? No, I, uh, yeah. I'm going to say I missed that one. It was coming. I can feel it. I don't get it. 
Oh, missed that one. I get it. I get it. Whoa, whoa. Uh, so I've heard good things about it, but I've never played it myself. Well, thankfully, somebody bought it for for Christmas. Yeah, he thought I would like it two years ago. Yeah, it's on my list. It's on my list. So here's <laughs> the back art for this, and I'll pull out the manual. Now. Yeah, this is like a point and click adventure. Mm -hmm. I am going to show this one while, well. Foam. Hold on. Wait, wait. There's the piece, uh, the CD. Go ahead. We're all so yeah, it was a, po it was a point and click uh, game, but it was very popular on the computer, on the PC back in the day for sure. So sure. Uh, like I'm curious to see how it is uh, when compared to like, the PlayStation 1. Look at uh, all the note pages. That's a lot it's not of even a role playing game. It's literally an interactive experience. You have to, uh, you have to solve puzzles in different rooms. But there's no leveling up or powering up. It is literally you see an area, right? And you're like, oh, okay, I want to go forward. You click the button at the top of the screen. Or I want to go to the left. You go to the left and so on. Ten um, pages for you to write notes on. This must have been a very intense game. And it's saying that on this, you can uh, see the making of mist on this game. Oh. On this, on this version of it, there's a making of mist option. So that's kind of cool. We should check that out. Yeah. And my favorite warranty card still attached. What if these things were defective? These people never took the opportunity. Just saying. Do you, either of you ever really send in any of those warranty cards? I don't think I did. I don't think I ever did. No. A dollar. We did not pay a dollar. I was wondering that with like the pizza points and like the GI Joe, you know, the, on a toys back in the day. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and move forward on this one. Wait, I'll um, just show the. I'll show the so NASCAR '98. I'll show the manual. So I just want to point out that we did meet this guy in a um it was like, scrapyard. Yes. So yeah, it's good times. Um, the the Very secrets nice and excitement on, on New York Nerd Show. Well, who knows um, where he got them from? I mean, you know, now this, this was a, part of the experience. Go ahead, go ahead. The NASCAR game had 11 tracks, so that was almost doubling what our F1 game did, but one year later. I like how they turn on the power switch. This is how you start the game. Turn on the power switch to your Sega Saturn system. Make sure a control pad is plugged into the port labeled Control 1 on the Sega Saturn system. Open the disc tray and place NASCAR 98 disc inside. Then press start to advance the game setup. Like people really didn't know how to do that? No, back in, back in the day, they apparently didn't. Whereas nowadays, they don't give you anything. You, just, you put it in, it loads yeah, up. Yeah, you don't then... even have a manual anymore. Right. Have you not read the instructions on how to cook a Pop-Tart? We have not. Is there an actual instructions for it? There is instructions. So the fact that there is that type of a level of, of instructions on a video game, not surprised at all. This must have been a later it on, It's got to be in the box. I got to see this at some point. 97. I was going to say, this must be later because they now have a email address. Mm. Ooh. All right. So next up, NHL All-Star Hockey. Sega sport game. This is really heavy, actually. This must be a very thick manual. Well, even beyond that, like the cases for the Saturn and Sega CD are quite heavy. Um, my friend Tom, back in the day, he had almost every Saturn game, which, God, that'd be worth a fortune nowadays. But I can remember his shelf was like literally bowing, and that's why I learned on mine. I just every like six months or so, I take them off and I flip the shelf if possible. Um, we got styrofoam. We sure do. Yeah, this is a very thick manual. Very hefty. All 26 NHL teams and the real players. Yeah, well, back in the day, it was you didn't always get the NHL license and the NHL PA uh, license. It was it was actually not super uncommon for uh, you get one or the other, if not either. Also, yeah, black and white. And it's funny, what is taking up most of the book, it appears, is that they explain all of the 94 to 95 traits of all the players. Oh, that's kind of cool, actually. Yeah, so I guess that way you know what team they're on. I don't... No, I mean, it's just kind of like a little fact. Well, you know what this probably did, though? It told you basically how the 1994 game was Ooh, a little different. Stanley Cup, baby. Yeah, buddy. Oh, here are the teams. Yeah. Any that are no longer in existence? The Nordiques. The Quebec Nordiques are no longer around. Uh, Hartford Whalers are not around anymore. And the warranty card. Um, and Edmonton Oilers. 
They're still around. They are, yeah. Um, Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. That's it. That was her full name. Uh, They're still around. They just aren't owned by Disney anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. Just by the fact they said of Anaheim is kind of interesting. Um, But yeah, I know the Nordiques and the um, uh, the Whalers. The Nordiques became the Colorado Avalanche. Am I correct on that? Um, that I'm not certain. And the Whalers too. Um, hmm. yeah. So this is kind of funny. They left the plastic on from the opening and then just like let it be on the inside. Kind of weird. But this is Slam, Slam and Jam '96. Now this was a really cool game. I don't know if you ever saw this in the arcade, Lord Cash, or anybody else watching. Slam and Jam was a, um, by the way, signature edition, actual sticker. Um, oh, it's behind the back plastic. You're going to have to put your own. But... So basically, Slam and Jam on uh, 95 and 96, because they actually made it on the Super Nintendo as well. This was nine ninety nine when he put the person picked it up. It's going to the back. So I'm going to do. Oh, go ahead. So if you go in the arcades, you would actually have two arcade machines facing each other. Um, so that would take advantage of the 3D basketball, one of the first games to ever do this. So if you were playing against me, you would actually be facing me almost eye to eye, and I'd be going towards you, and you'd be coming towards me. Um, very fun game. I'm. It's funny. I played the Super. I, I own the Super Nintendo one, and I played it during the pandemic last year. And it's funny to think that. Like the scaling effect, they actually shrink the characters. So there's moments where they look like the characters about the size of the calf of his opponent. That makes sense. They all are. Score a thousand dollar grand prize when you register your game. Thousand dollars. You lost. You missed out. Every three months, they'll randomly draw a one thousand dollar grand prize winner but unfortunately that sweepstake ended in december 13th 31st sorry december 31st 1986 that's too bad signature edition and no autograph no autograph well it is it's signed by kareem abdul jabbar and magic johnson Uh, on the thing yeah it's legit oh but they really are signatures yeah that's fine look at that that's why it's signature edition yeah I just wrote, I just saw something I wanted to show. oh handling your compact disc I'm, I'm gonna just share this real quick the compact disc is intended for use exclusively on the Sega Saturn avoid bending the disc do not touch smudge or scratch its surface do not leave the disc in direct sunlight or near a radiator or other source of heat always stare always store the disc in its protective case I like I like that one that Ask you to avoid bending it. That's good to know. Very true. So take this. All, All right. right. So we have a couple more. Yeah, we're almost done. Frank Thomas, Big Hunt Baseball. So here's the back. Big Hurt Baseball. Oh. He played hurt. for the Chicago White Sox back in the day. Oh. Um, what? Why Hurt? Big Hurt. Is that his nickname? No, he um had uh, massive arthritis. No, seriously. Um, and he had oozing pores on his wrist that there was just no, um, unfortunately, I kind of gasped. Okay. It's, you know, it's a sad story. This is his nickname. Well, uh, it's kind of a weird nickname. Well, anyway, it's purple disc. It says, disclaimer, CD-ROM made in the USA, not assembled in Mexico. So just so you know. That's kind of weird. Anyway, there's your side art. This case is in very nice condition. There's your warranty card. Start at the back. It looks like this is digitized yeah. graphics too, though. Um, much like I'm thinking of Mortal Kombat, um, right. made by Acclaim. So it's not a big surprise if there is digitized graphics. Let's check that out. Actually, I like this ad. It's like multiplied. What you see is what you get, and it's like him all over the place. More Frank Thomas than any other card set. Gizmo is coughing up over here. So he's got the big hurt over there. And uh, this is a pretty thick book too. Gizmo, are you okay? Thank you. Thank you. Must be all the must. Yes. I know. My nose is getting itchy. Yeah, that's what kind of like moving forward. It's like, it's well, disgusting. Done. I mean. These are the joys of getting used games from random fellows or ladies. But, you know, it's all for the collection. It's all for the hunt. Dang. So this one was $14.99 initially. Grid Runner. Um, so 
I think I played this back in the day, but all I could think of is almost like a Bomberman, but it probably isn't. Um, I'm not going to fold this up. Yeah. That's Looks manual. There you go. Is that a good one? I, I think these just need to be wiped down a bit. I can't tell if it's dust or rust or uh, roach babies. I don't know. I don't know Sweet. what I'm looking at. Make sure to this like, share, time, and subscribe. This one time, this is what video game stores have to go through. Not when we own a store. Hold on, just no, wait a second. with that one. Uh, this one? Yes. Oh, we finished. I see what you're saying. We have Madden 97. Hold on, wait. To... Go ahead. So it is definitely seen this as is, better as days. Yeah, this is usually what happens. The things get cracked right there. I don't, and then I don't honestly know why we have that one, because I wouldn't have paid any money for this game. Maybe there were two of the Matter 97s, and we meant to get the one without the keys broken. We'll have to contact the guy, honestly, because there's no way. There's absolutely I mean, no way I would have paid anything for this. Discount. Well, I don't know what to tell you. I think maybe it was one that had a good box, and we mistakenly got the one with, that was not a good box. But yeah. I'm, I'm not going to drive back uh, across the bridge for a $5 game. That's what we paid $5 for this. Yeah. Minus a discount of $15 for all the games. Right. Anyway, um, so let me share this delightful story that we learned from another gaming store. They, anytime they got a used console, oh. they would put it in a giant Ziploc bag, giant trash and, bag. No, no, Ziploc bag, trash and seal bag. it. Can you stop? It, it had to seal. It had to be sealable. Either way, they put because, it in a giant bag because because this one time they opened a console to clean it out, and it was filled with roaches. So they learned. Yeah. Part, part of the uh, the what is it the the gamble yeah. of, of buying used things. Last but not least, Iron Man in the heavy metal Exo Man of War. Uh, what is the title of this? Iron Man Exo Man of War and Heavy Metal. I'm guessing it's like versus supposed to represent. I don't really know. Um, I remember this when I was a Look kid. Look at these just, like, seeing the, uh, the ads for this, but I don't. Think I ever played it? So that's your that's your mid nineties, uh, you know, boobalicious arcade uh, album mm -hmm. kind of art that they yes. used to do. How come the men? Are, well, he's wearing short shorts, so I guess there's that's for the ladies. Who wears short shorts? He wears short shorts. What I love about this one is, yeah, you can see it sticking out. Oh, there's a foam. You could show that. There's the foam. <laughs> there's the game but i love when people have their codes and notes that they keep in the games right get out of that so let's try to get this out i'm gonna give you this there's that the discs were in good shape that was the one yeah. thing we definitely checked the start button skip skips briefing screens tgp meter armor lower meter flight boost power Whatever that means. C jump, deplete energy. <laughs> I love it. Options, wimpy. Hero lock stops rotating using in start button. This Ooh. is like not full thought, Ooh, but it's full manual. color, right? Nice. Full comic book manual. There's actually like comic pages in it. Nice. Yeah. Choose option. Look, he put the little oh. circles for the buttons. And you have. Looky, looky. There's Zemo. Oh, nice. Walk, run, double, left, right, crouch. So it's like a little comic book inside. That's yeah. fun. And... Well, sets the story up, maybe. Yeah. yeah, it is. Well, can we show? You can look at it after. Absolutely. You, you, you start it. <laughs> We're trying not to be cranky here. It's not working, though. It's 117 Two, degrees here. It is not. It's like 90, though. Two pages for notes. And warranty card. But yeah, definitely. This is the first full color of all of them. I wonder if it was the same price coming out. Now, is that for the advertisement on the back? Is that the uh, an X-Men game or the X-Men animated series? No, it's the X-Men um, arcade fighting game, Children of the Atom. That was a great game. Yeah. We have it downstairs. We have the arcade one up of it. Nice. So we haven't opened it yet, but yeah. it's the Game Pro. Uh, Game Pro scoring system right there. It got five, 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 and five. Yep. Good, good game. I love that one. 
So that was what we picked up recently in our little excursion. Yep. So, yeah, we do thank you guys for joining us for sure. And, oh. Hey, here's your uh, your directions for the Pop-Tart. We'll have to print these out uh, and bring them with us next time we make Pop-Tarts. Remove pastry from pouch. Warm pastry and toaster toasting appliance at lowest or lightest heat setting for one heating cycle only. Uh, remove, cool briefly before carefully removing pastry from toaster appliance. That is if you want it in a, uh, uh, a toaster. If you want a microwave, you microwave on high setting for three seconds. Have you guys ever microwaved a pop tart? I I don't even heat them up. I eat them. I eat them raw. I eat only the chocolate, but like the s'mores kind. I'll eat raw. I won't eat the fruity ones raw. I don't think. You get salmonella. So <laughs> I I do strawberry, cherry, and uh, brown sugar cinnamon. Are the three I do, and I eat them all raw. It's like sushi. I'm trying to pastry think. I have, sushi. I have eaten the the fruit ones raw, like when I'm brushing, and I don't have time to heat them up. I mean, to be honest, the last time we ate a pop tart was years ago. I Are you saying know. you don't have time for a three second microwave? I wouldn't. Mi I don't. I didn't even know they were microwave. I would never have microwave. There you go. I've I've, I've educated you a little bit. Yeah, but I'm very particular about like certain things. I'll only put in the toaster oven if I want it to be crispy, and I won't microwave it. I feel like pop tarts goes under that category. I feel like right. we just make it soft, not like. I Hard. have, and I'm, I'm going to change this up here just ever so slightly. Um, instead of putting like leftover pizza in the microwave, uh, I've been doing that in the toaster oven, yes. and it comes out a lot better. So right. much better, yes. That and I mean, fries sometimes are oh, just unsalvageable, disgusting. but if you put in the toaster oven, they get a little better sometimes mm, than when sometimes. you reheat. They're not as mushy as when you put them in the microwave. I'll have to uh, to, to remember that one. Yeah, I love putting those. And then also, if you ever get, I know we're going off tangent here, but if you ever Whatever. get like, uh, the rolls from like a pizzeria, I mm. love like those rolls. Those are very good in toaster oven, but you have to like wrap the, keep the tinfoil over the whole thing because then they won't heat evenly. Gotcha. But otherwise, they, they also get mushy in the microwave. So, you know what we need? We need um, uh, Hot Pockets to invent retail versions of those sleeves where you put things in it and magically they're crunchy from the toast uh, from the microwave and not soft because hot pockets they have that special thing you put the sleeve you put over the hot pockets i bet you that those would work with other things why are they not selling that to us why are they not giving us the magic maybe that's you know a uh, little uh copy not copyright but um uh what's the word i'm looking for it's their secret uh in your ingredient but not trademarked, but uh, patent. They have a patent on that. But that's what I'm saying. They should get a little extra money by selling us those things. I think the next time we get Hot Pockets, which I don't need Hot Pockets, but all that Pat does, I should take that little Not sleeve. Really. We, you have. Well, anyway. You, we should take that little sleeve and put on something else and see what happens. I think Hot Pockets should come up with their own toaster, to, or like toasters, strudels or something like that. And because again, it's a hot pocket of, of goo. Good point. You that, should send them a letter and get a percentage of their sales. Emailing it right now. Yeah, just All know right. how that goes. Thank <laughs> you for joining us tonight on the New York Nerd Show. We have a lot of different shows throughout the week. You just watch Call of the Wild. Uh, tomorrow with Crazy Card Collecting. Uh, this week, Tuesday and Wednesday, Slam Nation in the game room uh, may be reversing and flipping because on Wednesday, we actually are going to do a special Slam Nation uh, where we take a preview at the uh, AEW Double or Nothing pay-per-view that's coming that next uh, weekend. Um, Thursday is I Stream, You Stream. Um, <laughs> Friday is <laughs> Royalty. Testing my eyesight over there, Lord Cash. Uh, my, my apologies. No, you're all good. Saturday is Mail Call, Mail Time. Again, all these shows are at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you also want to watch us at any time of the day, check out our YouTube page because we have many different shows, uh, over 100 different videos. Um, but again, always like, share, and subscribe whether you're watching us on YouTube, Twitch, or Facebook. Share the word of the nerd. That's that's all that Pat's favorite phrase. Yes. That's right. To get, you, get you a piece of bread and spread the word of the nerd. Ow! All righty. Right, I got to go wash my hands. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Thanks for joining uh, us. <laughs> Adios. Bye now.